Hi guys, my name is Tom Antos and today I wanted to show you a, a new gimbal, you know, yet another three axis gimbal uh, called Moza from a company uh, called Gatson. Uh, this is a, a three axis gimbal that will work with uh, DSLRs, you know, small cameras like the Sony A7S for example, uh, all the way up to uh, some, you know, video cameras like the, let's say the C300. As far as I know, it's not going to take the weight of a, a, let's say a Red Epic. Uh, but you know it's it's getting up there. It's 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 it 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 goes outside of the range of just the DSLRs, and uh, you know it's it, because of that because of the fact that it's not designed to carry the the uh, you know the biggest uh, cameras out there. It actually the gimbal itself is a lot smaller. Now this gimbal I, I know a lot of people out there, out there already have been uh, comparing this to the the DJI Ronin, and yes, there's a lot of similarities. I don't want to get into debates of whether they copied the DJI or DJI copied them because you never know with these things. Uh, but it is very similar, very similar in a lot of the respects when it comes to design of, you know, uh, some of the, the, like for example, the mount here. Uh, you know, a lot of the things are, are very similar. Like for example, the, the stand for the, the, the gimbal, great stand, and it's almost identical to the one that comes with the, the DJI Ronin. And you know, really, the only thing I can say is the, the DJI Ronin. If you can, if you want, you can check out my review of that gimbal. Works great, and and so does this gimbal. And it's you know just really well thought out in that respect. Now, another thing that I like about this gimbal over the DJI Ronin is the fact that, like I said, it's it's not designed to carry all you know weights of cameras. It's more designed for smaller you know DSLRs or like smaller sort of video cameras like the C300. And because of that, the gimbal itself is smaller and lighter than the DJI Ronin. And that was really the only big negative thing I would say that I didn't like about the Ronin is that it was just, you know, working with it for, you know, any sort of a longer period of time, it was just a killer on your arms and on your shoulders. This one, I'm not going to say it's so light that you can run with it for a full day because it is still, you know, a fair amount of weight, but you can definitely carry this a lot longer. Uh, you don't always need the, you know, sort of an extra support. Now, as you'll notice, I did still attach here the Atlas camera support. I do use it when I'm when I'm shooting something for you know longer periods of time. I've shot a video with this gimbal, you know, at this re really nice uh, museum, uh, car museum in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, if you guys you know haven't ever been to Allentown, or you know you haven't maybe even considered coming to Allentown, Pennsylvania, it's not the biggest of cities out there, I know, but that museum museum itself is really worth visiting. It's uh, it's called uh, American Wheels, and they have you know, floors and just, you know, lots of different exhibits of really, really cool uh, restored cars out there, motorcycles, trucks, things like that. Uh, so if you're interested in, uh, in just American history, but also just in, in, in history of cars, uh, you know, all the way up to the, the latest cars, uh, definitely, you know, uh, worth ch checking out. They have some, some of the like earliest, for example, uh, uh, electrical cars. Uh, they have some steam cars, motorcycles, things like that. And so, you know, I decided to do all my sort of a camera tests with this gimbal, you know, inside the museum. So, you know, you guys have something interesting to look at. Uh, and also, I think it's, you know, if, you, if you're doing those kind of corporate videos or let's say live videos, like, like wedding videos and stuff like that, uh, I just wanted to really sort of test out and see whether this gimbal performs well in those kind of situations. So situations where you're going to be working by yourself or maybe just you and one assistant and you kind of want to know, you know, is this gimbal good for those kind of situations? And I can tell you, you know, uh, if you don't want to watch the rest of this video, I can tell you right away, yes, it's a great gimbal. Uh, I think maybe one of the, the best ones really, really out there so far that I've tested out, uh, especially if you're working as a one-man crew. Now I'll, I'll explain a little bit and you know sort of go by through everything and explain why I, I think that. But uh, uh, one of the just sort of the major things is that it's just it's so well thought out that it's just you know in all, almost every aspect it's very easy to you know gimbal to work with. So first thing is you know when it comes to mounting the camera and then balancing the gimbal, uh, as you'll notice it comes with uh, with uh, this Manfrotto you know, base plate, which you know is probably one of the more popular b b camera base plates out there. So if you already have any Manfrotto tripods products or, or base plates I use, great because you don't have to swap that out. You can just put put the camera right in there. Uh, so that's a really cool thing. Uh, it comes with uh, you know 50 millimeter rails that you can you know if, if attach up here, so you you can, you can attach things like uh, follow focus and things like that. Um, it also when it comes to balancing itself, as you can see it has just one knob here. And, and then another one here on the other side, and that allows you to adjust the camera position up and down. Um, for moving it left and right, you again have a knob here in the back. You just loosen that, and then that allows you to move the camera left and right. 
and then for uh, adjusting, so that's the roll uh, balance, and then for adjusting the, 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 the yaw balance, again, one knob here, you move it back, uh, back and forth. So really well thought out, and honestly, probably one of the, the fastest balancing gimbals out there. Uh, also, it's very, very sturdy. As you can see up here, I mean, I don't know what kind of material they're using up here, but uh, honestly, even if you do put a camera, you know, that this gimbal is not designed to carry, it, the motors maybe might not work very well, but the gimbal's not gonna break on you. And I've actually, while I was shooting with this, I actually accidentally dropped the gimbal once, and thank God nothing happened. I had also the rails here installed, so it actually protected the, the camera lens. So, you know, that's just a good thing, you know, to have in a gimbal, you know, knowing that, uh, that even if you have those unfortunate accidents and nothing's gonna happen. Um, outside of that, the gimbal itself is pretty easy to use, comes with batteries. Again, they're kind of custom made batteries, sort of like the DJI Ronin, but yet they are different. You press here on the back, you can see, you know, by how many lights you turn on, just how much juice you have in the, in the battery. And again, very easy to install. Just put it here in the back and you just sort of slide it down. That's it, the battery is installed and it is in there securely. It also comes with these really nice handles that are easily, you know, removable or just, you know, if you want to adjust the angle, just like I said, you just move it around and then just tighten that one up and that's it, it's done. So it's very quick to work with. The stand, like I said, it's almost identical like the DJI Ronin stand, uh, which is a great thing, uh, you know, very sturdy. And also the cool thing is that the top comes off and you can mount this on any standard light stand. Uh, so good for those kind of, you know, uh, on set kind of locations where you have a lot of light stands around and you don't want to have this thing on the, on the, on the ground. Uh, another thing that it has, which the DJI Ronin doesn't have, uh, is it has a built-in uh, battery here and also uh, a built-in uh, video transmitter uh, and it also sends out uh, camera controls. So I'm going kind to of break it down, but basically it has a here, it's maybe difficult to see, but it has a HDMI connection and it, at least the one that I got. Now th this model that I got is a pre-production model. So usually, you know, from my experience testing out pre-production models, uh, they usually have some little quirks and stuff. This one actually didn't have anything, you know, everything worked great, thank God. Uh, and it came with this cable, which is um, HDMI, uh, regular HDMI on one end and then micro HDMI on the other. So I, I could use it with my uh, Panasonic uh, GH4 camera. So you just pr plug this into the camera and it also come, come, uh, came in with another cable, which is just a different size HDMI cable. So it should work for most cameras. And then another thing that it comes with is this cable here, which is the camera control cable. Again, this one works with uh, the, the uh, Panasonic GH4. And also I've tested out with, uh, with a few different uh, Canon DSLRs like the Canon T2i and Canon 7D. But from what I've been told by the company, this will work with you know, any Canon camera. But anyways, the cool thing is that once you connect all those things, you're essentially getting, you have camera control. So you can do things like start, stop the camera, Plus, you can also uh, even control the focus on the Canon EF lenses. Now, this the focusing function only works on the Canon DSLR, so like Canon T3i, 7D, you know, 5D. Um, with the Panasonic GH4, I was not able to control the focus, but you know, I can still start and stop the camera, and I can uh, you know get the, the wireless video. So basically, you plug that in there. Now you have another here, nine volt. Uh, I believe it's no, it's a. 14.8 volt one amp uh, output uh, DC output you have out here that you can use for example to power your wireless follow focus things like that so it's a really great option and, and then the last thing you have here is just this little switch from uh, PAL to NTSC so depending on what kind of camera system you're working with you, you can switch that uh, it also has a, a little here like a little switchboard now I never had to change any of these things this is to change, I believe, the frequency of the video transmitter. Now, this is not an HD video transmitter. Uh, it's just a standard resolution, uh, and it uh, runs in 5.8 uh, giga gigahertz uh, bandwidth. Uh, so it's sort of like those standard, um, you know, uh, video transmitters that you use on, um, you know, when you're using, for example, like those, you know, RC, you know, uh, helicopters and, and things like that. Um, and it also has a little sort of switchboard here. Again, this is a pre-production model, so I'm not sure if that, that actually is available in, in the final production model of this gimbal but uh, again this one you would switch to uh, the different settings to depending on what camera you're using so it comes with like a little manual that explains you know uh, again which DSLR camera you have you switch that and then it has USB connection for, for this and for the other one too so to, uh, to you know in case you want to for example upgrade the firmware and things like that now the whole gimbal comes with the software all pre-configured you don't ever have to connect it to a computer you don't have to change any settings 
really the only thing I guess you might have to do is just switch, adjust those switches depending on what camera you're using, and that's it. Uh, you know, put the camera under, balance it, which, like I said, is very, very fast and easy, and then you're ready to run with this and, and you know, and st start using it. So, the great thing about this gimbal is that, you know, and, and, and one of the reasons why I, it's, I think it's my favorite right now to use is it's so easy and it has not failed me even once, which is not something I can say about any of the other gimbals out there that I've said. Like some, my, my other two favorites before this one were the DJI Ronin and the Kame 7800. Unfortunately, both of those, I did have instances where they, they needed calibration. This one, it does come with a, with a function on, on the remote control here, which I'll get into in a second, that allows you to calibrate it. Now, fortunately, I never had to do it. So, you know, if, and, and if I had to do it, I'm, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing it's simple to do, uh, from, you know, by looking at the instructions. It's just literally a press of a button. But, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I've traveled with this and I never had any problems versus, you know, the other two gimbals that I mentioned. Yeah, I had some problems, you know, where the, the, the sensors or something, you know, go out of whack when you're, especially when you travel, you know, big distances. And I guess the magnetic fields in different areas are, are different and that kind of throws off the sensors. So um, for this one right now, it hasn't failed me, which is, which is one of the great things. And like I said, not only that, but it has so many of these functions from the ease of, you know, balancing it to the fact that it has built-in camera control, wireless camera control and, and video transmitter. Now, you know, when it comes to the, the actual uh, wireless video, it comes with this cool little monitor. Uh, it has a sunshade, uh, which, you know, opens up like that. Now, you know, you don't have to use the, the sunshade. You can remove this easily. And as you can see, it has a little antenna. Uh, and the way that this thing works is it's, it's basically, uh, you know, as you can see, it's very small and super light. It's one of the smallest and lightest, uh, you know, little monitors that I've seen out there. And it also has in it built-in battery uh, and a built-in uh, wireless video uh, receiver, which is really cool because it means you do not need anything else around here. Uh, it even has um, uh, AV, you know, uh, AV and uh, audio and video out, and also audio and video in, in case you want to use this as a monitor for, you know, with your other devices. It even allows you to put a micro SD card in here, uh, so you can use this as a recorder. It even records, for example, the, the footage live up here. So really, really, really cool, uh, you know, functionality in this tiny little monitor. And to charge it, you just plug in the little USB cable. It comes with a USB cable. Um, and, and yeah, you just plug it in and it will charge the batteries. Uh, longest I've used this so far is, uh, you know, when I was shooting this video at, at the, the you know, American Wheels Museum, uh, which was about two and a half hours. And there, um, you know, it worked no problem. So the same thing for the battery that comes with this. Uh, again, I used it the longest, it's two and a half hours. That's the, sort of the longest camera test that I've done. Uh, I haven't actually used on any sort of big, you know, paid production uh, job. So, I, you know, I haven't tested out on a full day's shoot, so I can't really tell you guys how long this is going to work. Now, I'm sure the batteries for the gimbal, they're going to, you know, they're going to vary a lot depending on what size camera you have and just how well your, your gimbal is balanced. Uh, you know, if you're putting more uh, strain on the motors, it will usually that, you know, that uses up more, more batteries. Anyways, getting back to the monitor, really cool. It comes with this monitor and like I said, built-in video transmitter and you can, you know, take this with you. You can, for example, if, if you're going to do a two-man two operation where you have one person so carrying the gimbal for you, then you can be sitting here on the side and you can just watch, you know, the monitor. And then you can also do the same thing with the joystick that it comes with and you can, you know, use the joystick here to, to control basically the gimbal. Um, uh, or if you're using it, you know, like I said, one-man operation, then you can just mount it here easily to any of these points here, as you can see. And really great, you know, mounting system here, as you can see, super fast. You just do this and, you know, you, you can adjust the, the angle of it easily to loosen it, tighten it. I, it's, it just, it's a really great way of mounting and, you know, and removing the, the monitor. Same thing here with the joystick, has the exact same mount, so you can mount it up here or, or any other uh, carbon fiber uh, rod. Now the joystick itself, as you can see, is tiny. Uh, again, it has a built-in battery, has a little USB here connection you put in uh, to charge the, the built-in batteries. Again, I don't know how long the batteries last, but when I used it on the, the test, which is two and a half hours, it worked great. Uh, and it's a, it's a really cool little joystick simply because it's, A, it's small, so you can use it here uh, if you're using it you know, as, as a one-man operation to actually mount it here, for example. And then you know, as you're holding the, the gimbal, you can you can use that to operate the, the, the gimbal that way. Or if you're doing the two-man operation, you can take it off and you know, just use it use it alone like that. 
and it has you know it has a basic thing which is the, the joystick itself uh, allows you to pan and tilt the camera uh, also has these sort of three LED lights on the top and those will you know you have to kind of go through the manual not hard to learn but they'll just show you sort of the speed of the the, 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 the camera movement and also whether you're in uh, you know w which camera mode you're in uh, it also has this uh, two buttons here, uh, which is F and N, which is far and near. That controls your uh, your focusing. So, like I said, if you're using this with a Canon DSLR and using Canon EF lenses, great way of you know to, because it allows you basically to remotely you know adjust the focus of your camera. Now, the responsiveness of this it's decent, but because it uses buttons and you have to press those, uh, you'll notice that it's not. It's not really something that you can use for, like, if you really need to go real time, and, you know, and, and, and really fast adjust the focusing. So it's a little bit hard for that. Uh, I would still say if, you're, if you really want to, you know, find sort of control of your focusing in real time and, you know, and fast uh, too, then you should probably install a wireless follow focus. Uh, or maybe they'll do an update to this remote, which will actually have like sort of a standard, you know, follow focus you know, wheel or, or knob. Uh, which you know th that would re really make this remote, uh, uh, you know, I, I think you know, w would give it everything I think that, that we all you know want out there. Because I know a lot of people ask me always when I'm using these gimbals or I'm using a Steadicam, how do I adjust the focus? And really, the cheap way of doing it is to just not adjust the focus and use a really wide-angle lens. Which you know, if you know anything about depth of field, the wide, the, the shorter the focal length of your lens, which it means the wider the lens, uh, then the deeper the depth of field, meaning you just sort of more or less adjust the focus before you run and then you know that in that more or less that distance from the camera everything's going to be in focus uh, so that's the the best way of doing it another way of doing it is for example if you do want to use a, a sort of a longer focal length lens is uh, uh, just closing down on the aperture which you sh if you're shooting outside in broad daylight you have a lot of light that's no problem but you know if you're shooting it indoors uh, or just you know anywhere where you don't have a lot of light, then you know closing the aperture might not always be available to you. So, so that's when you know you'll you'll have to resort to using some kind of a wireless follow focus. Now, like I said, you can use this; it's just not as fast because it you know, uses two buttons. Uh, but it does come with the rails, so you can always install you know a lot of those affordable you know wireless follow focus systems that I've already reviewed out there. So. If you want more information on some of those, again, just check out the, the, the just go to the first link in the description of this video. We'll take you to a post about this uh, this gimbal, and then there I'll provide the links to some of the wireless follow focus systems that, that I like using. Uh, anyways, getting back to remote, it has the another button which is called you know S, and this is sort of like the system setting button, so you can use that to uh, change the, the, some of the profiles in there and, and the, the the responsiveness, for example, of the remote. Things like that, uh, and it also has a camera button, which that just if you press it, uh, will start or stop the camera, start recording or, or stop recording your camera, and then it has a, a, a options button, which is again another way of just changing some of the settings within the remote. Really cool, really little you know remote. The only, only really, and that's really the only negative thing I can say about this gimbal is that. Uh, the joystick itself is at least this one again maybe because it's a pre-production model is very limiting in the sense that if I go for example up or down you know the camera moves up and down left and right but if I go for example at a corner like let's say to, to, to top right where I want let's say I want to move the camera you know like to the right and then up at the same time it does not do it it's almost like it's it's kind of dead there it does not respond to it so the only way I can, I can operate the camera is I can sort of move it left, for example, and then up. I cannot do those two two movements at the same time because the joystick just seems not to respond. So that's the only thing. Now again, I don't know if that's with every you know um, with the actual final production model of this gimbal. So if any of you guys actually bought this gimbal already, you, you know, and you have the final production model and you've been testing it out, I'd be curious to see, sort of hear from you myself and see whether. You're having the same kind of issues, or, or that's that has been fixed. Again, that's not a major thing, uh, but it's just like I said, it's just a little something that I wish you could do, uh, because then that would really allow you to, you know, smoothly, you know, pan and tilt the camera remotely, you know, without ever having to touch the camera. Now, the camera itself right now uh, does not have it. It only comes with two modes. One mode is the follow mode, which you know, if you rotate the, the gimbal, it will follow in all, all axes, up and down, left and right. Uh, or the other one is just uh, the locked off um, uh, up and down and it will just follow left and right but the camera will not go up and down and that's when you can use the remote 
Now, I wish there was a third mode. Now, I contacted the company. I told them about it. They said they will work on a, on a third mode. So hopefully that comes soon. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have it yet uh, at the time of, of this review. And that mode is just simply the, the, you know, the completely locked off mode, meaning you can move around and do whatever you want. And the, the, the gimbal basically will stay still. And then this way would be really great, you know, way of basically using the, the remote then to, to just, just fully use the remote to control the, the, the pen and tilt of the camera. The reason why I think that would be a cool, cool, you know, mode and function to have is because if, for example, you're using this, um, if you wanted to mount it to something like, let's say, a, a jib or, you know, crane or a cable cam, then the cool thing about then is, you know, is that you, you don't want to be, you don't want the camera to always follow where the, the gimbal itself is pointing. Uh, so you want that to be completely independent and then, you know, do all of your pan and tilting using the remote, which, like I said, right now, it's just, it's not available, at least not with the version that I have. Um, but yeah, outside of that, you know, uh, so far the gimbal hasn't failed me, produces really smooth, smooth shots. It's lighter than the D DJI Ronin, which just makes it a lot easier. I, I, I don't always need to rely on, you know, connecting the, the Atlas camera support. As you can see, I do have my Atlas camera support attachments here. For longer periods of time, I would still recommend it. But if you're just going out there getting quick shots, it is, it is totally workable with this gimbal. Um, you know, easy to, to balance, works flawlessly. Uh, you know, it's, it's very durable, comes with a beautiful case. Uh, the case comes, you know, fits all the accessories here. Like you see, you know, the monitor, the, the remote, extra batteries, uh, all the cables, all the things that it comes with. Plus, it has a lot of extra space for your, any other accessories that you might want to have. Uh, like, for example, a remote follow focus and things like that. So, really great case and really secure, has a lot of latches. So, uh, you know, uh, you should not be afraid of basically checking in the, the luggage if you're, for example, traveling somewhere further. Um, yeah, really great gimbal. Uh, like I said, I've, you know, this sort of came out of nowhere. I, I never heard of the company, never heard of the gimbal. Then all of a sudden, you know, I heard about it, contacted the company, got this, got this unit to sort of test it out. And I gotta say, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really, it's really impressed me so far. And I think, especially for the price point that they're offering it right now, uh, you know, if it's, 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 it's going to create a lot of competitions out there, especially for gimbals like the, you know, the DJI Ronin. So, um, you know, if you guys want, uh, I would say sort of a foolproof uh, gimbal for your DSLR or sort of, you know, mid-size and, you know, smaller or mid-size sort of video cameras like the C300, this is a great gimbal to go with. Um, you know, I'm just sort of excited and, and, and waiting to see what other improvements and little additions the company will do with this or maybe the, the next generation of this gimbal. So, uh, if, I, if I hear of anything or, uh, you know, or if I do get the... the the new updated you know profiles and things like that i'll definitely do an update video about this to, to let you guys know but for now for all the information about the gimbal just check out my website at tomatosfilms.com uh, thank you guys and I'll, I'll see you next time